Hey everybody, in this video we are going to talk about how easy it has become to get access to classic synthesizers like the entire virus range of Waldorf Micro Q. Keep in mind that these are not some half-baked imitations of the iconic virtual analog synths, but almost 100% authentic recreations that are available free of charge to be run inside your DAW. We will take a look at whether all these claims are true, compare it to one of the more recent original instruments and try to find out if all this might even be illegal. If you are like me, a 90s kid, chances are that you had a wish list of industry standard VA synths that were off limits budget wise. Nord Leads and Modulars, Waldorf Q and Microwave, all viruses, Korg MS2000 and Novation Novas. You might be surprised to hear that these profoundly different instruments are, code and physical UI assigned, based on the same microprocessor technology, the Motorola DSP56300 series. While computer emulations of these DSPs have been around for a while now, they have just recently reached a level of maturity that makes them conveniently usable in a professional music production environment. The most comprehensive source of information and ready-to-use applications is DSP56300.wordpress.com, where you can find in-depth information and downloads for all major platforms and standards. Quite similar to emulations of vintage gaming consoles, you need two things. The 100% legal emulator, which not only replaces the DSP, but also comes with a tailor-made UI for the specific synthesizer and, and this is where it might get a bit tricky both technically and legally, the original and of course copyrighted firmware of the instrument. Some of these ROMs are publicly available on the manufacturer's website. In the case of this beautiful virus TI, it is part of a larger software download that requires you to a register one of their products and b find an unpack app that does the trick. It is not legally advisable to give more information on how to find these firmwares, but the aforementioned 90s kids among you will find a way. Installing the emulation plugin itself is super easy, barely an inconvenience, but Apple users will will have to do some well-documented low-level hacking in the terminal. As you might have already figured out, the plugin itself will not make any sound. The synth firmware, which is usually a bin or mid file, needs to be placed in the same folder as the plugin. Location of these folders depend on your operating system and the plugin standard you are using. Rescan your plugin folder, accept the usual terms and agreements when opening the plugin for the first time locate the preset folder if necessary and you're good to go. Nice. These were just a few of the sounds many musicians and producers get VA classics like a virus for. Especially in the case of the TI here, the versatility and sound quality of the engine is, at least, on par with many contemporary software instruments. Let's do a quick comparison with a hardware original, have a look at how the emulation performs in a DAW environment and try to find out if there are any quirks and limitations you should know about. In in order to make the comparison between the software and hardware wires as accurate as possible, I was using the digital SPDIF connectivity of the TI. This not only allows us to take variables like digital analog conversion out of the equation, I also opted for the hardware synth as a clock source. A 
as expected, the sounds are not phase identical, presumably because of the free-floating VCOs and LFOs, but I would be hard-pressed to tell them apart in a blind test. Be aware of the fact that converter technology and the analog side of the output stage might play a bigger role when it comes to other 56300 based synthesizers though. Axis made use of overclocking techniques when designing the TI. You can activate this in the emulation too and, super interesting, play it at higher sample rates not available on the original. Polyphony on the hardware instrument is dynamic with a maximum voice count of over 100, depending on factors like unison settings and FX configuration so a direct performance comparison isn't easy. I was able to play 5 instances of a classic virus pad with 12 voices each on a humble Mac Mini M1 amounting to a total polyphony count of 60. But was running into issues when adding more. As it seems, CPU consumption is rather modest during MIDI playback, but massive spikes tend to occur when the plugin is idle. Feel free to leave a comment about how it performs on your system, especially in a Windows or Linux environment. I am torn when it comes to projects like this. I like the idea of being able to easily recreate the actual hardware of an instrument, not only because it makes legendary tones available to a broader public, but quite similar to to the current discussion about the availability of old game console ROMs also for preserving them for future generations. It is easy to make an argument for this in the case of the Axis virus range, as all these synths have been discontinued and the manufacturer's focus lies on completely different products at the moment. I reached out to them for an official statement but haven't received an answer yet. However, a manufacturer like Waldorf is still a strong player in the synth game and just recently dropped a plug-in version of one of their classics. It would be great to find a solution that satisfies all parties involved, granting synth enthusiasts access to these great sounding engines, limiting the economic downsides for the original manufacturers and helping the people behind the emulators to push forward innovation in that field. But that's maybe a bit too much to ask from a simple meme video. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and use one of the links down below that support the channel regardless of what your guests command you to buy. Thanks to all my patrons for supporting the channel and welcome to the monthly Vokoda shoutouts. Spectrovox might be the best Moog for Psytrance, but it's certainly not my favorite Vokoda. Fortunately, there's subtitles. Tier 4. <laughs> Well, it's analog and 700 bucks, so it must be good. Tier 6. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for supporting the channel, see you next month!